it's Miss Alana here working on math and working on other school stuff and working on learning stuff, working on so much stuff. I know you're probably like waiting for this video. You know what happened? I recorded the other videos at school, but then we had a meeting, then I had to go, then I had some other work to do. So lots of stuff happening. I know you're waiting for the rest of the videos. So it's kind of coming in reverse because I actually have to record the last ones. So when it uploads, it becomes the, f no, record the last ones first because they upload backwards. <sighs> Crazy, so I actually record backwards. I learned that uh, a while back when I started recording and uploading videos on YouTube. So, in this video, guess what? It's gonna be a mashup. It is gonna be a combo. You know, like a like a combo you get at the store. Like, hi, can I order a, a number one combo? But this is a math combo. It is a math combo. You don't get fries with this. You don't get a drink with this. I'm gonna do number one, number two, number three, and number four. All the front side, all together in this one video. All right, today, bam, right here is Wednesday, December the 7th. Is this thing clear? Is it clear? Let me clean it up. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get that done right now. All right, so I don't have, I'm in my office, I'm not at school, so I don't have an active expression board here. So I am just going to do it right here. So are you good at following along? Are you good at following? You better be good at following along. Let's, let's begin. All right, right here. The first box right here, what standard are we covering? We are covering, let me read it to you. Operations in algebraic thinking, write and interpret numerical expressions, MGSE 5OA1. It says use parentheses, brackets, or braces in numerical expressions and evaluate expressions with these symbols. So right here, we need to evaluate these numerical expressions and don't forget to use the correct order of operations. Parentheses first, multiply and divide, then add and subtract. All right, now you're gonna have to follow along with me without me writing it, okay? So pay attention, right here. Can you hear that train? Can you hear the train? I am here on Main Street and the train is going by. You know the train right here in Tucker. Can I'm about to put somebody out the building. I'm about to put Cheyenne out the building. I'm about to put her out. She messing with my recording. She better learn and listen. Just like you all out there better learn and listen. All right, back to some math. Right here, it says, five plus two parentheses times four. What are we going to do first? We need to do that five plus two first. It's in parentheses. And what's five plus two? That is seven. Then multiply that by four and what do you get? 28. Done with number one. All right, you ready for number two? Let's look at number two. Number two says 15 minus in parentheses, six divided by three. What do we do first? Whatever's in the parentheses. And what's that? Six divided by three is two. And then we're gonna do 15 minus two. And what's that? 13, that's right, 13. All right, number three, what does that say? Eight plus two in the parentheses times seven minus four in the parentheses. So let's start right here. Eight plus two is 10. And then we do seven minus four is 30. So now we do 10 right here times, no, did I say 30? Did, did I just give you the answer? Did I just give you the answer? I didn't mean to do that. Rewind, rewind, rewind. Eight plus two is 10. Seven minus four is three. And 10 times three is 30. All right, bam, done with that. Moving on to the next one, right here, rounding. Are you ready for me to read the standard? Read it with me, it says, number and operations in base 10, understanding the place value system. MGSE5, NBT4, use place value understanding to round decimals up to the hundreds place. Now we need to round each number to the underlying place value and always look to the number digit on the right. All right? Digit to the right of the place that you're rounding to. So look at that first one. What do you see right there? 
it's five and fifteen hundredths. So that one right there looks at the five. Is that less than five or five or more? It's five or more. So what happens to that one? The one becomes a two and the rest become zeros. All right, keep up with that, okay? So you end up having what? Five and 20 hundreds. All right, hold on one second. Sit right here. This girl is acting up. I hope you're not acting up. Hmm. Somebody might need to be put on punishment. Huh. I hope you don't have to get put on punishment. I hope you do right, do right. All right, let's look at number two. 83 and 498 thousandths. Look at that nine. It looks next door to the eight. Is that less than five or more? It's more so that nine becomes a 10. But just like today, look, that can't just become a 10. Look, it's like a 49. So the 49 turns into a 50 and the rest become zeros. All right, let's do number three. That's 729 thousandths. So that seven looks right next door to the number two. Is the two less than five or five or more? Less than five. So that seven does what? It stays the same and everything becomes zeros. All right. And let's look at number four. Number four, it's 65 and 506 thousandths. So there's that five that's underlined. Look right next door to that zero. Less than five or five or more? Less than five, so that five does what? It stays the same and the rest become zeros. And we're almost done. Look at number five. It says 34 hundredths. That zero is underlined. What place value is that in? That is in the ones place. So we look next door, that's a three. Is it less than five or five or more? Less than five, so it becomes that zero what? Stays the same and everything becomes zero. Zero. All right, are you good? If I'm going too fast for you, go back, go back. Now, I know some of you all are spoiled out there because you love it when I write it down, but you can do this, you don't need my writing on the paper to work it out. You got this. You're smart. All right, you ready? Let's look at the next problem. The next problem says number and operations in base 10. Perform operations with multi-digit whole numbers and with decimals to the hundreds. MGSE5, NBT7. Add, subtract, multiply, and divide decimals to hundreds using concrete models or drawings and strategies based on place value properties of operations and or the relationship between addition and subtraction relate the strategy to a written method and explain the reasoning used. we are going to solve the word problem we're going to solve the following word problem by adding subtracting multiplying and or dividing draw a model solve and check your work and don't forget to use the cubes clues and write the solution in a complete sentence all right are you ready Let's read the problem together. Read it with me. Miss Alana is buying five pounds of beets. Each pound costs 92 cents. How much change will she receive if she pays for it with a $10 bill? All right, first thing we do is what? Circle the numbers. What numbers do you see? I see five, so circle five. What else? Right here, 92 cents, circle that. We circle that five and that 10 right there. All right, done with that, check that off. The next one, underline the keywords. All right, what keywords do you see? The pounds of beets, the each pound cost, 92 cents. How much change will we receive? And that $10 bill, all right? Done with that step. The next step, box the question. What's the question? How much change will she receive if she pays for it with a $10 bill? So go ahead and underline that or you can highlight that. And the next one is due to what? Eliminate unnecessary information. Is there anything there that we can eliminate? Oh no, we need all that information. 
and the last thing, solvent check. All right, now, you're gonna have to do this on your own, but I will get you started. All right, so the model, what do you do there? You draw a picture, you make a visual representation of the problem. So what are we buying? Five pounds of beets. So I want you to draw five circles or five rectangles, or if you can draw beats, do that. Okay, not, not beat like boom, 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 boom. Not that, not that kind of beat. Okay, the vegetable, the vegetable. And inside each of those, write 92 cents. Each of those is, so 92 cents, 92 cents, 92 cents, 92 cents, and 92 cents. All right, what other picture do we need there? A picture of that $10 bill. Go ahead and draw that. Now, to solve, this is a two-step problem. First thing we need to do is what? Figure, how much, figure out how much all those pounds of beets cost. We would do what? Either add 92 cents five times or multiply that 92 cents by, by five. So do that in your solve box. Now, we have something else to do in the solve box. We have to subtract so whatever total you got whatever total you calculated there subtract that from ten dollars and remember to do ten decimal zero zero so put all that getting a phone call from one of you let's see hello she hung up on me how rude how rude I'm gonna get you tomorrow. All right, I'm gonna tell everyone who you are, being rude, calling me and hanging up. All right, so we're right here in the salt. So two things you have to do there. You need to write how you added or multiply the 92 cents times five, and then subtract that from 10. All that goes in your solve box. I have a creeper in front of me. I have a creeper in front of me recording me doing a recording. Yes. My oldest daughter is on her phone. She's probably putting me on Snapchat. See, she just doesn't know that we're famous on YouTube and now on Snapchat. Yes. Go, Miss Alana. Woohoo! All right. Now, to check your work, what would you do? And she's texting her friends all, all up in our business. She better tell them, get some of this math, learn some of this math. All right, to check the work, you need to do the opposite operation. So if you added the total, you can multiply and then add that change. Uh-huh, see, that person that was being rude is calling me back. I'm gonna tell her how rude she's being. Hello? 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 I, I know, guess what? You're on the video right now. I'm recording a video. She's laughing. And you know, just a second ago when you called me and hung up, I told everyone on YouTube how rude you're being. How rude. I think the phone doesn't have good reception. Hey, let me finish the recording so I can upload this because everyone's asking for it. I'll call you back. All right. What? What? I'm recording it right now. She's asking for the recording just like all of you are asking for the recording. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it now. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. All right. You'll find out tomorrow for me who is that person being rude. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna blast her all on YouTube for the whole world to know. Ah, all right, actually no, I love her. I love, I love you, I love you girl. You're my girl. All right, the next one, check, show how you check your work. If you use the calculator, right? I use the calculator to check my work. For the solution, make sure you write your answer what? In a complete sentence. I'm not going to help you with that. You come up with that complete sentence, that awesome fifth grade sentence on your own. Okay? We're almost done with the front side. All right. 
the last part right here on the front side. Let me read the standard. It says number and operations, fractions, use equivalent fractions as a strategy to add and subtract fractions. MGSE 5, NF1, add and subtract fractions and mix numbers with unlike denominators by finding a common denominator and equivalent fractions to produce like denominators. All right, so we have our tool, our fraction bars right there to help you check it out, check it out. All right, look at the first one. The first one says, let me put it close so I can see it, one half plus one six, one half plus one six. So do you see half right there? And do you see one six right there? Now, which one do we change? Do we change one half or one six? We need to convert that one half into equivalent fraction and into an equivalent fraction. So one half, look, follow my finger, look. Uh, bam, do you see that? One half is the same thing as three six, three six. So right here under one half, you can write three six. Three six, right here, plus one six is what? Four six, do you see that? So one half, bam, is the same thing as three six, plus one six is four six. And look, 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 which is equal to what? Oh, look, look, look. Bam, two thirds, two thirds. Okay, did you get that? If not, rewind what I just said, go back, go, go, ah, go back and just listen to that again, okay? Moving on to number two. Number two says one half plus one third. Now look, there's one half, and there's one third. Oh my gosh, guess what? This one's a little tricky one. Miss Alana tried to trick you. Actually, no really, I know you're smart enough to handle this, and I'm gonna help you out right now. One half and one third, where well, you can't turn them into each other, because look, one third, no. But guess what, I'm gonna give you a hint. Do you see what else on our fraction bars we can convert half and thirds into? Okay, look, one half can be two fourths, but one third can't be any type of fourths. One half can be three six, and one third can be two six, bam! Right there, we just made equivalent fractions. Okay, I will show you again. This right here will blow your mind. Look, look, look. One half is the same thing as three six. One third is the same thing as two six. Do you see that? So write that here. One half is three six, and one third is two six. So we have one half right here, which is three six, plus the two six, which was one third, is the same thing as one, two, three, four, five, five six. Five six, is that the same as anything? Can we reduce that? Oh no. So that's just five, six. Oh, that was so easy, so easy. If you're confused, just watch what I just said again. If not, I'll help you tomorrow in class, okay? All right, where am I? No, going back to the wrong problem. The next one, number three, is one half minus one six. All right, where's one half? One half is right there, and one six is right there. Oh, look, bam, we can change one half to three six. Do you see that? One half is equal to three six. And if we take away one six, there's a three six. Take that away, what's left? What's left? Two six right there. Is two six equivalent to anything else? Look, 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 look. Bam, one third. All right, I'll do that again. One half is equal to three six right there. Take off one six you're left with two six, which is the same thing as one third. We're almost done. Number four for our fractions, it says two thirds minus one half. Two thirds, we're two thirds right there. Two thirds right there, minus one half. Oh, they, no, they're not equivalent to each other, but we can change them into what? Look back, we did that for number two. We can use six right here, look. What was that? Two thirds. All right, two thirds, where's the two thirds? Right there. Two thirds is the same thing as four six, and we know one half is the same thing as 
3, 6. So if we have four sixes right here, and we take away three, one, two, three, what's left? One six. Let me, let me do that again. One half is the same thing as three six, and then one third is the same thing as, am I doing it right? No, messing up. Two, ah, two thirds, right here. Two thirds is the same thing as four six, and I'm taking away half, all right? And half is the same thing as three six. Four six, take away three, one two three, we're left with one six. Okay, I hope this wasn't so confusing for you, me going it through, going the, go, go, I can't even talk right, going through the work verbally with you, that means saying it, not visually, not like writing it down, although you can see this visually. All right. So I apologize for that. Hopefully this video was able to help you with the front side. If not, no worries. I will help you in class tomorrow. Uh, I, maybe I need to make a Miss Alana clone. I need a Miss Alana clone that can help me that, so I can do everything. Because remember, not only is Miss Alana taking over the world, but you are all there with me, Miss Alana and my class. We are taking over the world, so we need to multiply our bodies and multiply our minds because guess what happens? When you're awesome, you just have so much things to do, so much things to make you even more awesome and make you even do better and be smarter every day. This was such a good and productive day. If you need help with any of the other questions, go find the other videos. If you need help with these because this kind of confused you, that's fine. I'll help you out tomorrow and no worries. Make sure, now don't just leave stuff blank. Don't leave it blank, get it done. Do your best, write something down. Work it out as best as you can and I'll help you with that. If you have a parent that can help you, ask them for help. If you have a brother, sister, cousin, someone that can help you, ask them for help. Or call me on my cell phone. Yes, call me on my cell phone when you need my help. Yes. All right. So until I talk to you, until I see you, I love you. Keep working hard and be awesome and amazing every day. Yes. <laughs>